Hi, my name's Jackie Duppel and welcome to All About That Place. My talk is about a place called Rulaban, which you may have already heard of, or it may be, like to myself, something you've never heard of. And the person whose life took me to Rulaban was called F.E. West. Military aspect, non-military aspects of the First and Second World Wars. There's a photograph of F.E. West, and this was a project undertaken for the Legacies of War at Leeds University. So F.E. West turned out to be Frank Edmund West, and he was in Rulaban for the duration of the First World War. My brief was to find out more about him, um, his past, present and future at the time, and um, it took me to Rulaban that I'd never heard of. It also took me to a place called Brill, which is in the rural Buckinghamshire countryside. It took me to an education school in Thanet, Margate on the left in Kent, and eventually to Berlin, which you can see down at the bottom. So this was Frank's path and his father's education, ambition perhaps for his son, I think took him to Rulaban. And here you can see a first record of Frank at Rulaban in the Prisoner of War records on the International Red Cross website. Although he wasn't a prisoner of war, he was a civilian. So what was this place called Rulaban? It was a British civilian inter internment camp established after the outbreak of the First World War and it was there to hold the British citizens. By that it doesn't necessarily mean they were what you and I might call British. They not necessarily could speak English, they may never have been to England. Um, there were all sorts of backgrounds and reasons for this, including it included crew of merchant ships that happened to be in German ports. And from the uh, synopsis online on the screen you can see there were about 4,500 males only um, at the time uh, for most of the time and it was a very very mixed community. So what was it? Well it, it had been a race camp, a tracking track as you can see from this uh, image on screen. And down, this is at the time of the camp and down at the bottom we have got what were the stables which were used to house the men. One of the famous people or well-known people in Rulaban and there was a great mix of society and nationality and denominations was a, a nationalised British Dutch born Nico Jungman. And he did lots of paintings, including this one, which shows how the racetrack, the tracking track, became a vegetable patch. Initially, they were not allowed to grow vegetables um, and to feed themselves. But by the end of the war, you can see from the slide at the bottom how many the enormous quantities of fruit and veg that they were actually um, producing and at the time of the end of the war in 1918 there was a great danger of the camp being overrun because they had food where the people in Berlin did not. The camp made its own magazine uh, which you will find regularly online. They developed their own coat of arms which with um, taking in the German elements of it, of their lives, which, um, and the rat and the German sausage and clogs, etc. Uh, this magazine slide gives you an indication of just what was happening in this place. They developed a community, a town. There were people of all walks of life, educated, academics, skilled craftsmen, so they set up debating societies, theatres, languages, shops, all sorts of things, dentists, medical care and an orchestra. And it's there that F.E. West was involved, an orchestra playing at the theatres. 
And remember, these are civilians. They walked into the camp. They had their own clothes. They had their instruments. They could walk in and out. Minimal um, uh, prison supervision. And they put on the Messiah the first Christmas. They had a terrific post office system. Um, lots of parcels going in. By the end of 1917, they were getting 37,000 parcels a month. And they had this elaborate um, system of delivering parcels. And the post office here working six shifts a day and franking. They also had a horticultural society, which obviously was to keep the internees busy. Uh, there's their flower show in August 1917 and the quality of the vegetables that they were growing. So the RHS uh, supported them in this initiative. They also did all sorts of um, utilities and event over a period of time. This didn't happen immediately. Um, they had hot water, they had bakehouses, etc. And within reason, a comfortable way of life. But of course, they knew what was happening outside. They knew they'd got family and the conflict that was going on. So it would have been a very mixed psychological place for um, everybody. And um, here you can see the quote from the commandant telling us that when the men were first brought there, it wasn't fit to keep pigs and that they did such work to create their own environment and make the best of it. And for some people, their education that they received, there were footballers and all sorts, um, would benefit them when they were released. Raleighban today is just a stop on the um, train, the sort of, um, as you can see there, and the site does no longer exist. It's this recycling plant. The reason for the project was to highlight in Spandau the records of Ruleben and its place in the First World War. If you'd like to know more about Ruleben, there's plenty on the internet. Harvard University in America bought a lot of the material. My colleague Chris Payton has a website which has many individual pieces of information. He had relatives that were interred in Ruleben. And you may also pick up diaries, for example, this one. So a Cardiff schoolmaster had just gone in the holidays to improve his German and that was the end of his travels for a while. And he worked in the post office, as you can see, uh, and they, they did get a lot of uh, food that way. They also got a lot of drink that way, which is quite an interesting thing to think about. So what happened, just to round off F.E. West's life after the First World War, what did he do for his work in the second? Well, if we look at the 1921 census, we see him we with his German wife and he is working for a German company. Is that what had taken him into Germany to work? Did he just live there? Was he just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Um, who knows? I can't tell you the answer to that. But I can tell you in August 1943, he was on an imperial censorship examiner and he was on a flying boat going from Bermuda to New York. Of course, Bermuda was British, so this is why we pick him up. And again, it's a place if you wanted to, dis to look into the Boeing 314 these stately flying boats, another place of interest. And Frank's death and probate, um, he did his bit, if we like to think of it as that, in the Second World War. He was an imperial censorship examiner. That's what they did in the plains. And so, just a taster about Ruleben and the influence on it had on one person. F.E. West. Thank you for joining me at All About That Place.